What's up guys, this is Justin from the Board Game Losers and we are back continuing our playthrough of Dungeon Crusade with our Laruna Nightweave Battle Mage and Carrick Roan Paladin. So we're just going to get right to it as always. We're starting with the upkeep phase. Uh, so let's go check out our heroes, get everything situated there and uh, then we can head into the dungeon. All right, so here we are with our heroes. Uh, upkeep phase, we don't have any afflictions. Uh, they both have a lit torch, as you can see here. So we are gonna have to roll uh, the lit torch. We're gonna use a D12. Remember on a one or a two, the torch will go out. We'll start with Carrick, who's also lost one torch. Oh my God, he almost lost another one, but he's good. And our battle mage is good so all our torches stay lit which is great uh channeling i do not believe we have any skills that are channeled oh nope i take that back we do have that spectral sword so we're gonna unchannel her spectral sword carrick hasn't used anything um initiative tokens we're of course gonna go with our standard one two three for carrick and four five six for the battle mage and finally teleport track nothing to do there because we have not completed our quests and that completes the upkeep phase encounter phase let's see what we draw oops we draw uh oh all right let's see here uh nobody's in combat nobody is being targeted so um a rather inviting and mysterious purple portal, portal materializes before each of the heroes. A soft, childlike voice from beyond is beckoning them to enter it and help them. Each hero must test willpower 14, which, remember, we're level 2, so that's actually going to be an 11, to resist the temptation of entering it. On a pass, the hero remains at their current location. On a fail, the hero steps into the portal and is teleported to a spawn point. Roll a d8. The result is the spawn point. <clears throat> where the hero has been teleported. Okay, interesting. <coughs> All right, so willpower check. Uh, willpower. So our we'll start with our paladin. He's got a three, and then remember he also has uh, with his um, gem of enrichment three more to willpower. So that's a total of six, and that is. Yep, that is all he has. So he's got a plus six to this. Target is an 11. 18, more than enough, so he does not get sucked in. Our mage is a plus five with her normal main stat. And she also has a plus four uh, from... The Enchanted Charm. So she actually has a plus nine to this. So she ought to do really well. With a six and a nine, that's a 15. More than enough. They resist the urge. And that encounter has been passed. It's kind of nice to actually pass an addiction encounter, you know? And not fail stuff. Um, guardian phase. Currently, our guardian number is... Uh, is a 16. Forgot to move that down last time. Just double check that. And uh, so we're going to roll 14. That was close. So no guardian spawns. 16 goes to a 15. That takes care of our guardian roll. And now we go to our heroes. Um, so we're going to start. Uh, with our Paladin, he's going to take the first um, first uh, activation, and we're going to go down to him on the board. He is going to probably be doing some chamber combat here in the Watchtower, because if you remember, uh, we had to clear out the Eastern and Western Watchtowers. He cleared out the Eastern Watchtowers, 
And so now he is going to clear out the Western Watchtowers. All right, so here we are at the Western Watchtowers. Uh, we've got two rooms, uh, this room and this room. We're gonna start with this one probably, I think. Uh, so we're gonna take us a D6. We're gonna do a movement with our first activation. So that will take care of that. D6 plus his torch is two. Plus two from his movement, that's a plus four. Wow, of course he gets 10. <laughs> So he's gonna go one, two, three, boom, into the watchtower. And we're fighting a level two champion. So let's go over to the battle board and see what we got. All right, so let's see what we have. This is level two champions here. Draw the top and we've got an orc berserker. Okay, level two, uh, physical, spiritual, uh, yeah, physical, spiritual, and chaos, ancestral rage at the start of every combat round. So this is going to be one of those where each round we've got to, and a round is we go through all three uh, of the warfare types. We'll have to make this roll. He rolls a 20 on result 16 and 20. It activates each wet failed warfare roll a hero makes. They take one additional damage. Ooh. Ooh. That could be hurty. All right, let me get uh, all of everything set up for Carrot, get all his stuff out that we're gonna use, and we'll commence to combat. All right, so before we start our first round of combat, uh, I was looking at his board, and I did not realize that he is down to two health. So before we do combat, at the beginning, because we can do this uh, during, uh, during uh, combat in a chamber, we're going to use both of these healing hands, which is going to give us a D4 and a D6 of health, because he does not have another potion. So both of those are going to become channeled. So those will uh, go to our channeled state. We're going to get a D6 and a D4. And let's hope that it's good rolls for health before we start. Oh my God, four, which puts him to six, and that was 13 uh, essence. We used five, three, four, so he's down to eight. That was absolutely horrible. Okay, well, let's hope we don't get hit. Um, good thing his angel is angel of essence, because he's probably going to need it. Uh, okay, so first round of combat, uh, we're going to start, and this is the start of every combat round. We have to roll, and it is a five, so we don't get extra damage during this combat round, which is good. Uh, so we're going to you be using potentially physical, potentially spiritual, and potentially chaos. All right, so... We're going to start out with three, with Chaos. Um, wow, that is probably the worst one for him to start out. He's got a minus two to Chaos. Oof. Uh, and our target number is 13. So he's going to actually need to roll a 15. Remember, this is Champions. This is Chamber Combat. No final strike die. Nine is not 15, as it turns out. So he's going to take a damage. He's going to go to six to five. All right. So then physical. Okay. That's his jam. So he's got plus four from his bow. He's got plus four from his class. So that's a plus eight. We need a 15. So this would be a seven or better to do three damage at 13. That does it. Uh, we'll use this to mark the damage. It's three damage on the orc. And of course, spiritual will be next. Spiritual, he has a plus three there. He has a plus four from his class. That's a plus seven. And we need a 12. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. 
Can we roll a 15? Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was way more than enough. Um, yeah, so we've got, what did I say? Plus four, plus three, seven. So plus seven for spiritual. Oh, yeah. That's 14. That's 18. He just needed a 12. That's another three damage. Total of five health. So that takes out the orc berserker. So, uh, loot roll 13 plus for gold, 17 plus for a treasure. No, 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 19. Okay, awesome. And that is 100 gold, which is sweet. And then we take our big fat loot deck. Good lord. This thing is so huge. And we're going to pull off the top of our loot deck and see what we get. Mostly hoping we don't get junk loot because we've seen that before. And, oh God. This is, I've never drawn one of these. Holy crap. Uh, okay. This is one of the like rarest, rarest items. Um, Grand Staff of the Undead. Plus six damage adds eight to arcane. Deduct the hero's level from the d20 result. So you roll the d from the d20 result. Oh, I think. Oh man, I'll have to look this up. I think. Oh yeah, when you use this, you roll a d20, and you have to make that roll or higher in order for this not to kill you straight up. So in this case, we'd have to roll the d20 and then subtract at this time. <coughs> Excuse me, at this time it'd be level two. So subtract two to not die. But man, it's six damage and plus eight on arcane. So you're going to be, and you're going to be hitting something with arcane for sure. Okay, well, it obviously is no, uh, no gold cost. So I guess for now... We're going to tuck it in his infinite backpack, and I mean, you know, we'll see. Because it could be that at the end, you know, we get a we get a guardian that we, at the very end, we need to kill. And if he dies, it doesn't, you know, go up far enough for us to lose the game. It may be worth using it. You never know. But uh, he did that. Oh, we also can't forget... We also get two life force from killing that enemy. So we're going to take that to the board. That's going to be a total of 10 life force on the board. So, neato. Um, and also, while I'm speaking of life force, um, so... I've been watching, obviously watching uh, his uh, Rogers playthrough um, on his channel. He just wrapped up, just finished up the uh, Solo Crusader playthrough, and it was interesting because uh, what I discovered in watching that that I did not realize uh, was that. When he, when you do solo crusader, um, you when in a normal game, when you do solo crusader, when you in a normal game when you do setup, you have to remove um, a skill from each of your heroes. So you you just randomly draw one, you know, draw one skill out that they're not going to have. So in our case. Um, we did that and we removed Imbued Fury from the Battle Mage, Garrote from, um, another, one of the mercenaries we had, the Rogue that we haven't used yet, and then Holy Guardian from uh, our Paladin. Well, when you're playing Solo Crusader, you actually, um, as, as written, uh, by Roger, you actually don't 
remove those. So we're going to add uh, add those back. This is the garrote that we potentially could have. Um, and the other thing that, that he said, and I've already started this, so I'm not going to change it now. I'll change it in the next one, is that um, you actually change your mercenaries uh, when you have Celebration Day. Or not, you don't change them. You can keep who you have, but two new ones go out to hire. And so you can choose whether you um, whether you want to uh, keep your existing heroes or mercenaries and continue to use them, or you can opt instead to get new mercenaries uh, based on the new ones that come out in uh, the mercenary camp. Now, I'm going to choose to keep the ones that I've got because I they're working, you know, our battle mage and paladin are working pretty good together. Our paladin being the primary, our battle mage being the mercenary. Um, but the other thing that you have to do is you're supposed to pay half of the cost of hiring a new one as kind of upkeep for keeping your mercenary. So I'm actually going to pay, and I believe it's 500. Um, and I think it's it's rounded up. So it actually would have cost me 300 to keep the battle mage mercenary. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take the 300 that I have currently, and that's going to go away, um, and that's going to be what we would have paid for that. So that's uh, that's uh. It's just something that I realized, because remember, at least if you're watching this in the future, um, the rules have not been officially published. I'm going off of what Roger's doing um, on his channel and just asking some questions and stuff, and that's something that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, looking through, uh, watching his videos that um, I realized that I had missed. Um, I missed him say that at some point. So I'm just trying to fix it back up and get it as accurate as possible. So we pay that money, so we should be square there. And uh, we're going to take our champion deck and put it back, uh, back over here to potentially draw out later. And remember, that was just his first activation, right? Um, so... He can, uh, he's got one more, one more activation. And I believe, I believe, um, I believe if he, if he can move that, uh, he can actually, if he's got the movement, he can go into the second chamber. I think. The only thing that I can't fight twice in an activation are the minions, but I could go in, I believe, and still do chamber combat. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know. Uh, so with that, we're going to go back over to him. So here he is. So we're going to take the second activation, and we're going to move him. And he's going to go out, hopefully, and around into this room. That's a three plus another... Four is a seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Whew, literally just enough. Seven. To get in there. And of course, oh, look at that. Empty chamber. I should have known that. Oh man. I should have known that. If I'd remembered the setup, I'd have known that there wasn't anything in there. Shoot. Okay, well. I was that was it for his first activation. <laughs> Um, cool. So his, he's next, his second activation. So I think for his second activation, we really, we need to get to kind of over in this direction because just over, over there is, um, are the doors that we've got to clear out for the quest. So I need to make my way in that direction. Now, unfortunately, the problem is that no matter where I go, unless I kind of backtrack and go back this way and then up, 
Um, I'm going to have to go through some traps. And given my history with traps, this could be a problem. Oh, actually, you know what? One other thing he's going to do uh, at the end of his first activation is he's actually going to go ahead. Oh, no, he doesn't have another healing hands. That's right, because he's not level three. Uh, I really hate for him to have to activate. And like do some traps and such. Maybe. Yeah, maybe he's just going to go the long way around. This, is gonna, this may be kind of, <clears throat> maybe kind of a boring run for him, I guess, in that respect. So let's let's uh yeah, let's let's go with the second activation and let's do some movement. Remember he's a D6 plus four. So six, boo. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next activation. <laughs> so one plus three four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. But, right, the thing is, what we can do, um, since we're right adjacent to a mining spot, is... This is going to movement. I'm just making sure. Stand adjacent to and reveal the mining. I don't know. I think we have to spend, don't have to spend a whole action to mine. Move to discover secret room. Lock. Chest token. Moon tech minion or guardian. Move into a chamber. Move into a chamber and rally. Move and mine. At, oh, yeah. Now here we go, move and mine at one of the mining sites in the dungeon. So he's actually going to mine right here at site D, since he has a pick. That's what I was thinking. So we're gonna roll. Remember it's a D3, one. And it's off of site D. So we're gonna pull site D. Breaking the rocks you find. Pebbles and dirt. Yay. So basically, nothing. Awesome. Just what I always wanted. So we'll put that over there with his other. Um, now we'll go with his second activation. Boom, boom, boom. Just do a lot of movement. It's eight, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was his first activation. His next activation. He's basically heading towards the uh, locked rooms. He's six plus four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. That was the second activation. So, time for his third activation. Let's move you down and see what he does. Let's hope that he does much better in terms of rolling. So this is his third activation. First action. Two and four is a six. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Last activation. Two and four is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is where he's at after three activations. Oh man, that is that is messed up. All right. Um. I think where's that one at? Gosh, it's all the way over there. I think we're going to have our mage for now. Um, 
she's just gonna she's just gonna start trying to take out minions. I think is what she's gonna have to do. So let's go to her and see what she's gonna do. All right, so here's a battle mage. This is activation number four, which is her. Now I've got a decision to make <clears throat> because either knowing that we need to kill the orc archers, I could either run to the other side, towards the other side of the map, where four out of the five minions we have on the board are, um, or I could go over here and try to kill this orc siege breaker. Oh wait, you know what? He's raiding. So yeah, we <coughs> we need to kill him. So no brainer. We're gonna start with that. So we're gonna activate her. Remember, she has a D two. Sorry, D six plus two, plus the torch. That's another two. Plus she has the pendant of swiftness, which actually gives her plus six to this movement. Nice ten. Um, the thing is we have to go we have to spin with a sinkhole you remember we have to spin three movement to get over it which lands us on a trap space which we check and of course it is an actual trap that is the Fourth trap space that was an actual trap. That is insane. We cannot catch a break in the world of traps. All right, so we're gonna have to shuffle these up. And we're gonna draw. Oh my God, are you serious? It's that one again, abducted. This is the same one we had in Quest 1 at one point. Oh, as the sea rose walking down a dark corridor, two of Kaldar's minions escape, oh, sorry, emerge from a secret door in an attempt to abduct this hero. Test willpower 16, that becomes a 13 because of our uh, scaling difficulty. On a success, the hero reacts enough and slays the two minions. On a fail, they're abducted. They go off the board and every upkeep, we have to do a strength test to see if they come back and break free. <sighs> Willpower. She has a plus uh, five to her willpower. The check is a 16, 17 minus three, so it's a four, no, sorry, 16 minus three, so 13 or better with a plus five to this roll. Natural 20. She defends like a boss. Awesome. Uh, and she has only used three of her movement. So I'll put this back in there. Do some more. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And there we go. So she gets to continue uh, and finish off her movement. She had a movement uh, that is three. She had a total of 10, so that was three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And she is going to combat this Orc Siege Breaker. So let me set the Orc Siege Breaker up and we will get to combat. All right, so here we have the Orc Siege Breaker. So we've got the rating token on him. Um, he is physical, chaos, and mythical. Uh, the two weapons that she has uh, equipped uh, are the Alaw Blade and the Golden Bow. So depending on which one of these we roll, uh, if we roll mythical, we use the blade. Uh, if we roll, well it, doesn't, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because ranged and spiritual aren't going to give us any any advantage. So. Actually, we're just going to use the Outlaw Blade, because it's the same either way. So, remember this is a minion, so we are going to use the Final Strike die. So let's see. Three, Mythical. Okay, well, there you go. So, we got the Blade. Now, fortunately for us, um, that Blade does give us plus two, which actually offsets 
the minus two from her character board. So we need a 12 to hit. Uh, and his ability has to do with if he actually finishes the raid, and raids the village, so that does not affect combat with us currently. So, whoa, okay. Oh, dang. So that is a near perfect roll with Warfare. There's a 17, so that is two damage on him for that. But, oh, that's a three, that's not a one. Two damage on him for that. However, we completely whiffed um, with our final strike die. So that is no bueno. Um, that's quite unfortunate. Uh, so that was that activation. Now the thing is, she can't attack. She can't attack again. Um, on this activation. So, and the the other thing is, there's not really anything for her to do. Um, the special ability. Oh, she could. Yeah, she could try that. She could. She could use a. Her spectral sword. He only needs one damage. So I think we're gonna go ahead. We got it. Might as well use it. So we're gonna actually channel a spectral sword. And uh the target monster is plenty close. We'll roll anything other than a one or a two, and he is bye bye. And that's on a D6. Since it is kind of magic based, we'll use the green D6. Come on, anything but a one or two? A six? Oh, that's two damage. That'll be a total of four, which will kill him. We are right beside him, so we can go ahead and do our loot roll. Now, unfortunately, it's a 20 20, so. Ooh, not a 20, but that was awful high. So we don't get uh, no life force. We did kill him. We don't get any loot from him, but he was raiding and he is now doing nothing. So cool. Um, so yeah, now she's going to head back to the other side of the map, basically. All right. So that was the first action. So now I'm take her second action of her first activation. Uh, we're going to move. And again, we're just going to be heading back up kind of the way we came up into this room and then over uh, in sort of a similar direction um, as our paladin, just trying to get to you know, that side of the board where most of the enemies are, especially the orc archer that we want to take out for our quest. So this is a D6 plus a total of six, two for plus two uh, on our sheet, two for the torch and two more for swiftness. Alright, here we go. Total of seven. One, two, three, four, five. She does not have enough to go over that sinkhole, which is quite unfortunate. So that takes care of that activation. We'll go to the next activation. She'll use her first action of that activation to move. Two plus six is eight. So it's gonna take three to get over that. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Next activation, heading that way, is gonna be a D6 plus six. Okay, 11, that's much better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Cool. So that was her fifth activation. So now let's go over here to her sixth activation. Um, now, now she's got some options, as they say. All right. So looking here, the orc archer is actually just down this way a little bit. Um, 
but I think there's two. You can see these two right here. I think maybe she's gonna go that direction just because she could kill two and have a better chance of rolling and getting some more archers out there. Remember, using my modified uh, rules for these kind of kill hunt and kill quests. Um, so our first activation is going to be moving to get close to that cultist. Again, D6 plus 6, that's a 10. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, actually, yeah, we'll do that. So, she is actually there with both of these guys. Um, and so she's going to move and attack. She's going to attack the uh, cultist of Zul. Now, the interesting thing about the cultist of, of Zul... It was misprint, I think. Um, is that is that well, she's she's close to two, right? So there's two right there together. So the whole thing with this uh combat and the final strike die is this kind of changes the way combat works because with the solo mode and with the um the new way to do the combat, you can actually, when you have two monsters that are right there together like that, um, with the evolved combat, if she kills one, the extra damage could go to the other one. Now, like I said, she's got to kill it, okay? Um... We process the roll fair or uh, roll like normal. Process the final strike die like normal. Um, but if we have a critical strike, so basically, uh, in the example in the book, uh, the hero swings. He's right beside a skeletal grunt and orc archer. Um, he swings. He rolls. He rolls enough on the first one. He hits the first <clears throat> enemy, right? And when you look at uh, the health on that enemy, in his case, it's three. Or it's uh, two. It kills it. Um, so he, he killed it. Uh, but he rolled high enough um, to hit on the final strike die, so there was two damage left over. Um, so he gets to apply that to the other the other minion that's there. Um, so what we can do is we can we can roll like we would normally roll, and let's say. Let's say that we do hit with both the final strike die and or with the warfare roll and the final strike die. It's going to take three damage to kill that uh, uh, cultist, right? But we can also, if we roll high enough, um, that that roll is high enough, we can also hit the Prowler. And as I understand it, and I, if I have this wrong, please let me know. We make that determination of the hit based off the first uh, enemy that we attack, I believe. So what if we successfully hit the Cultist, then we will actually successfully hit the Prowler. But I probably, let me, let me verify that um, before I say that. Yeah, okay, I was right. So we could just apply that one extra damage to the Prowler 
And then that way, even though it's not three damage, uh, which would be ideal, because we don't have any three damage weapons, uh, unfortunately, on her, um, if we hit it again, right, we could damage it, or we could just choose to use our essence um, and use our level two spectral sword and take it out. So at least it gives us options. So I'm gonna put the Cultist of Zul out. We're gonna attack it first. And then if we get the hit on both, uh, then we will process that and hopefully, 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 we can take out both of these guys uh, in one fell swoop. So let's go to the Battle Mage for that attack. All right, here we are. So uh, I've got the Cultists of Zul. We've got Spiritual, uh, Arcane, and Ranged. The only weapon I'm going to use is the bow because it's going to give us an advantage on two of those three. Um, the Outlaw Blade wouldn't do us any good. So let's roll to see what we're going to attack with. And also went ahead and put this out uh, in case we do want to use that. So, all right, spiritual. Not the best one for her. Uh, that is a 13 target. The bow gives her three, but she's got a minus three. So this is going to be a straight roll with a 13 is what we're looking for. Fail, she's going to take two damage. Oh, wait, before combat. Sorry. We have to do a roll. For combat, Heart of Darkness. Uh, the Cultist rolls a d20. 14 on a 16 to 20, something happens. It doesn't, basically gets uh, extra health for the round. So fortunately, that was not successful. So here we go, looking for a 13 or better. <sighs> wow. Holy crap. All right, well, um, we missed on both of those. And that is actually, if you look at her card, that's a double damage. So, yeah, she's taking six. Oh, sorry, she's taking four. She's at eight. She goes down to four. Ouch. Um, yikes. And, of course, because she got within... Uh, within range of them, she is going to convert both of those um, into raiding minions. So this cultist is now raiding, and also the uh, Blackwood Prowler is raiding. That did not turn out. Um, that did not turn out how I wanted it to turn out. I'm gonna be honest. It was not supposed to happen that way. So we're gonna take another token and we're gonna put it on the Blackwood Prowler. So when we do movement now, those are both raiding minions. And they're both gonna head south of her location. Uh, huh. What to do, what to do. Well, that is not good. Um, does she have any healing potions? She does have a healing potion. So she's gonna go ahead and for sure use this healing potion. That's gonna add six to her health. She's at four. That at least takes her to 10. And actually while she's there, she's also gonna go ahead and use this Ultra Juice. Gain six essence. These are all free actions on her turn. So that's gonna take her to, from five plus six is to 11 essence. And so she's, that's what she's gonna do. Um, yeah, with her next activation, she, I think she's just gonna have to pass it basically. And we're gonna, we're gonna try this again. I think we're, well, I don't know. The Orc Archer is a little bit easier to hit. Maybe we should go down there and do that. Maybe that's a better option. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think she is going to head south. Oh, no, because then they're going to make a decision right there. Now, she's going to forego her next action. Uh, so, there it is. 
Oh wait, no, that's her six activation. Shoot, she can't do anything. All right, she's gonna, she is gonna move, <coughs> and she's, she's gonna move so that she potentially won't take any more hits as they head out of the dungeon. All right, so here she is uh, with her last activation. So this will be the end of her activation. She's gonna move. Uh, she's gonna head south um, because once they get to this point. They're both going to head down here because the bloody arrows and their um, rating, they've got to make a decision. They're either going to go down again or they could potentially go over here. So if she can get maybe a little bit further down here, if one of them goes that way, she might get hit. But maybe they won't both go that way. Maybe maybe that'll be, that'll be the key. So D6 plus 6. Plenty of movement with a 12. So she's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. She's gonna go, she's gonna go right there. Because well let's let's go eight. Because if one comes down, it's gonna come down this way potentially and then or no sorry it's going to come down to here and then go out or it's just going to keep coming straight down so that way she may only get hit by one um yeah that is the end of the hero phase actually so there you go um interesting interesting times um i was really hoping that we could take take that out but it did not work out for us um, but that's okay. That is the way the cookie crumbles, as they say. So let's, uh, let's go to the big board and, um, let's start moving all of these guys around in the monster phase. See what kind of shenanigans they're going to do here. All right. So I'm going to start with the red cultist of Zul is over here. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it wasn't the red. Oh, wait a minute, did I do the wrong one? Oh crap, I did the wrong one. I'm gonna redo that combat. I'm gonna redo that combat, hold on. Let me show you which one it's actually supposed to be. It should have been this one. There's the card. The Heart of Darkness is the same. That part doesn't change. So actually, let's roll. Uh, oops, that's a three. So it would have been using ranged, which she's got a plus three with the bow. So let's redo that. We actually might have killed it. Oh yeah, nine. Uh, nine, and we needed, what did we need? We needed a 12, plus three with a bow. That just barely makes it 12. That's enough to kill it. So actually, she did kill this. She did kill this. Awesome. This comes off the board. Excellent. I, I grabbed the wrong, I grabbed the wrong card. That's what I did. Uh, you can see the roll here. We've got an 18 plus, or a 19. Where are you at? There you are. 18 or 19 for loot and such, and that's a seven, so no joy there. No life force, but hey, one more minion off the board. Okay, cool. Man, I'm glad I caught that, because that's one more potential role we've got. Uh, all right, so we look at our minions. We only have three out of the five we need. So we're gonna do our roll. If we look at our UI board, we need a 15 plus. If we roll a 15 plus, we're going to pull out the first Orc Archer that we have in our minion uh, deck and use it. A 12, nope. We get to do that twice. A 14, that's just insulting. So no joy there, unfortunately. So we're gonna pull out our minion deck. Give it a shuffle here. Boom, 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 boom. Gonna give it a shuffle. 
give it a shuffle, give it a, I don't know, right there, cut. I'm gonna draw two. There's the two that we're gonna take. And let's see what we get. We get uh, Ever Overgrown Blue Black Rock Viper for our fourth minion. And <laughs> that Green Orc Siege Breaker is back. The one we just killed, literally. Okay, well, so let's grab their standees. That's a Green Orc Siege Breaker. It's just so, we just, that's so funny, we just killed that. And a blue Black Rock Piper. We're gonna take a D8, and we're gonna roll for their locations. Five for the Black Rock Viper, which is right here. And, whoops, six for the Orc Siege Breaker, which is right here. So everybody's on this side, so I guess it's a good thing we're over here. Oh, we didn't run Albus. We should run Albus. Let's do that right quick. He's got a D10 plus 10 with two activations. 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Well, again, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just leave him right there for now. All right, cool. Now that that's all semi-sorted, um, we're going to do movement. Uh, the Red Cultist of Azul right here. D6 plus two is not rating. Three, uh, that's a five. So, one, two, three, four. Decision needs to be made. Going orange, so back the way she came. Five. Uh, red Orc Archer. Wait a minute, I just moved the wrong one. Oh, we'll say that was the Archer. archer. Cultist of Zul. I pointed to her and then grabbed the wrong one. Uh, Five plus two is seven. Oh wait, he actually, the archer moves one more. He moves plus three. Uh, so seven, she definitely is gonna have to make a decision. Going green, so one, back the way she came. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Blackwood Prowler. Okay, Blackwood Prowler, remember it is rating, so it is just straight up going to go following the arrows. Arrows right here, it's right here. It is a D6 plus four. It's a nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, uh, blue Black Rock Viper that we just dropped. Gonna have to have a direction. I don't know why I grabbed a D8. And rolling a D6. Ooh, wow. Uh, purple, one plus four, that's a five. So one, two, three, four, five, because that's the blue is on the purple for that. Green Orc Siege Breaker up here, same thing. Five of green, he's a D6 plus two, so seven on green. So we're going up this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. Okay. Um, interesting. No, uh, let's see. One, two, three. Wow. That, that, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. One, two, one, two, three. Actually, you know what? As soon as as soon as uh, this archer hit this skull pile, he should have become raiding. Dang it! All right, so if that's the case, he's headed out this way. So he's going to move one, two, three, going that way. So I guess the paladin will be taking out an archer uh, before he gets up here. Cool. All right. 
<clears throat> that is the end of that round. Not a bad round, I suppose. Um, oh, well, hey, guess what? We cleared out the watchtower. So that is that is good. Um, <clears throat> we didn't need to do that. And remember, the uh, watchtowers were just part of the, the quest that we have. We also have to kill six of those orc archers. Uh, that's also part of the same quest. So even though we've completed that, portion that's not the end uh of that quest so that is everything uh and i think we're good to go so thank you guys for watching and subscribing come back to us uh in the next video where we will continue our playthrough of dungeon crusade uh by grievous games unlimited roger deering's uh brainchild awesome 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 game really loving it uh, go check out his channel. He's got a lot of videos uh, for explaining rules and some playthroughs and can get you, you know, information on the game, Very a lot of information on the game, uh, detailed information on the game, and uh, see if it's something for you. Uh, but until next time, this is your friend, Justin. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing, and I will see you, my friends, in the next video. Bye, guys.